I've been lying about who I am for too long. I'm a Sigma male. Are you a lone wolf? You're not a alpha. You're not a beta. You're an individual. You're unique. You're John Wick. You're cool. You have exited beyond the simple dichotomy, the, the Chad Alpha and the Virgin Beta. No, you have moved beyond it. But what is the Sigma male? Really, who is the Sigma male? So many believe that they are a Sigma. Is it perhaps a case of mimetic identity? And if so, what does it mean? And why has it gotten so popular? Sigma males come into existence only upon people learning about them. Once you've read about the traits that make up who a Sigma male is, only then do they become real. You were not Sigma before, but you are Sigma after. This is the nature of projective identification, where we are given a template and we pour ourselves into it. It speaks to us, but what part? A part of us that is soft. A part of us that is what Guy Deleuze describes as schizophrenic. When you find the Sigma male identity, you've not in fact found anything. You've been infected. You've been infected. Such is the case with all projective identification. All of these are tiny, impermanent egos that have been bestowed on to you with a purpose. So was the Alpha and the Beta, the Virgin and the Chad, and the Doomer, as I've talked about before. These are all identities, tiny little egos, little personas, and each one had a psychological significance, a symbolic significance. The Sigma male is a kind of movement away from a simplistic dialectic, the one that was present between the Alpha and the Beta. The Sigma is the movement away from that dialectic, but it fails as the identification simply becomes a, a source of humor itself. After all, if you really were ready to move past Alpha and Beta, why would you need a new title? If you need to identify with a title, you do not have an identity of your own. You've cultivated nothing. You were infected. 14 signs, you're an indigo child. You're strong-willed. You're a free thinker. You're an unconventional nonconformist. Number four, you've been infected with a mimetic identity. Indigo children are a really fascinating breed of New Age identification. My good friend, Default Friend, wrote an excellent piece, and I'll link about it in the description. Indigo children are basically like a New Age kind of Aquarian identity, wherein children are different from the other kids. They're very different, they're special, they're unique, but that's not enough for mom and dad probably usually mom, and so the child is redefined. They are recontextualized. They are bestowed with an identity. The identity is spiritual. It is meaningful. It connects the child to a larger, brilliant pattern in this world. One that doesn't exist, one that is a fiction, and not one based in any spiritual traditions, but one that's new age, you know, pull out of thin air. Now, what is this similar to? What other identities can you pull out of thin air and you love to receive them? Those 
are BuzzFeed personality quizzes and tests. What kind of pasta are you? What Starbucks drink are you? What color are you? All of these served the interest of the BuzzFeed founder, Jonah Peretti. He was engaging... What? <laughs> what? Jonah Peretti? Anyway, Jonah Peretti made BuzzFeed personality quizzes as a means of establishing a method of Deleuzian schizophrenic magic. Deleuze describes the way that egos can be formed and manipulated by capitalism. Identities are one of the primary products from capital. And the schizophrenic flows are the dispersal, the breaking up, but the permanent, excuse me, the impermanent identification with that ego. Peretti realized that this was extremely profitable, not to fight against, but to indulge even further in, to accelerate the condition. And so we've been given an industry of identity. Every typology, every single little personality test that you take is intent on temporarily taking control of your mind and your life. And sometimes it sticks, as is the case of the Scientology test, the Oxford Capacity Analysis. That is a test meant to form an ego identity and restrain it and control it for the rest of your life. This may sound like a bit of an exaggeration, but the Sigma male can be just as insidious to the person who wholeheartedly identifies with this essentially meaningless, vague set of traits that have been provided to you in a mimetic form. Jonah, no! You will pay for exposing my machinations. Make him look like a nut. What is the effect of these schizophrenic mimetic identities. How is it that we become schizophrenic? You may only be thinking about a psychological diagnosis, but Deleuze was not. He was describing the fracturing of personality, the splitting of libidinal flows into what he calls a rhizome, whereas the traditional personality is arborescent, linear, the schizophrenic is rhizomatic, writhing in and out without any rhyme or reason. This is why schizophrenic language appears strange and seems to go back and forth between worlds and is it future or is it past? When we engage in mimetic identities through the internet, you are allowing the internet to schizophrenize what may have been a rather solid ego identity that you had structured before. Your self becomes increasingly fractured. It's a very common meme that all of the, the Gen Z kids have gone through a uh, hundred political ideologies in a year. That's very dangerous. It's not a good thing to go back and forth between all these ideas. We're not made to think that way. In the past, there was usually one singular path that you walked your entire life and then you die. And that was the good life. That, that's satisfying. But today, you change every day. You have a new goal. College kids can barely get through college without changing their major and changing their whole identity. Changing their hair color, changing the way they do their makeup, their fashion. All of our identities have been thrown into the tempest. And what are the wages? Madness, tragedy, death. Now, I'm not arguing for a static identity. In fact, I think that most of you should absolutely kill the old self and start again with something beautiful. What I, what I do think, what I am warning against is digital identity, mimetic identities. So, if you want to establish a true self, you are going to need to develop mimetic immunity because we know. Ah. Mean.
things matter.